14, 28. Luke 14, verse 28. Listen good, brothers and sisters. For which of you intending to build a tower? Which of you, you men, you women intend to build a tower? Go ahead. Sitting not down first. Sitting down, what? Sitteth not down first. Sitteth down not first. Sitteth not down first. Sitteth not down first, thank you. And counted the cost. Before you build a tower, what y'all got to do? Find out how much it's going to cost. Do I have the resources, the materials, the finances to build this tower? Go ahead. The spirit. <laughs> right. Whether he has sufficient to finish it. And whether you have sufficient to finish it. So now Christ is comparing this tower to what? The this truth. You being in this truth is compared to a tower. Before you start the tower, ask yourself, self, do I have the resources? Do I have the financial means to finish this tower? That's the first question. Go ahead. 29. Less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that he, all that behold it begin to mock him. You got half a tower. Everybody out there talking about ah, <laughs> You just spent all your money on that tower that you couldn't finish. So likewise in this truth. You put all you had in this truth and you gave up. You turned back. Now your family and friends talk about ah, ha, ha. You was that Israelite nigga with your fingers and water of blue. <laughs> look at him now. You were trying to teach me about the Bible and look at you. Exactly. Come on. Saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Saying this man began to build and he couldn't finish what he started. Your wife that you left, cause some of you, I'm leaving her. Now you, now the woman's hung up. Now you wanna come back? Nigga, get the hell out of here. <laughs> you put me away. Here's the white woman now. Right, right. You put me away. Now you're coming back to me. Oh man, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you was not able to finish. Really? Come on. <laughs> or what king? Watch this. Or, or what? what king? Going to make war against another king. You're going to make war against another king. Go ahead. Sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against them with 20,000. You got a council first. You a king. You got 10,000 men. You going up against the army that got 20,000. Twice what you got. <laughs> you got to sit down with your men. Can we, be, can we defeat them? You got a council first. Go ahead. Or else. While the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. Right, you sending somebody with the, what they call that? The white flag. We give up, we surrender. You started this fight. Now you can't, I'm gonna give you an example. There was a movie about that. Who knows that movie? Troy. Y'all saw that movie Troy? Nobody saw that movie? Look at the movie, look at the movie. They start a fight, a battle, all over adultery. Now I forgot the people's names in the movie. I, not him. The one that committed adultery. Paris. What is it? Paris. Paris took another king's wife. Then Paris with his brother want to start a fight with that king. That king goes, okay. Hector. 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 His brother. That was his brother. Now the king, what was the other king's name? Agamemnon. Ag Agamemnon says, all right. He got his brother there, his army. His brother says, listen, let this be a fight between me and Paris. Paris. Yeah. The winner gets the, uh, gets the woman and we can end this. No, okay, we gonna fight, we gonna do this. The, the king's brother beat the hell out of Paris. Paris is calling to his brother Hector, help me, help me, and started this war. Started this whole war on adultery. Over adultery. Then trying to look for peace near the end. You started this thing, you can't finish it. So likewise, Christ is letting us know. In this truth, it's a war, it's a battle. Counsel with yourself. If I start this, can I finish? Some of the brothers that you see today were not here a year ago. Some even years before that. Some brothers, are, uh, some seats are empty. Musical chairs. Brothers were not able to finish. They broke bread. They broke bread up in here. Some of them thought they was good. So you know who I'm talking. They was in a gym lifting weights, talking about, look at me. I'm a powerful brother. 
<laughs> Did we see them brothers now? They gone. They under a woman somewhere. Under a woman somewhere. It ain't all about your physical prowess, brothers. That don't mean no this is a spiritual fight. Enduring to the end. That's what's gonna get you through. That's what's gonna get you through. 32, watch this. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So Christ said, consider the tower, consider the king going to war. It's the same way. If you are not willing to give up all that you have, you cannot be my di disciple. That's what Christ said. You can't be his disciple. That's a heavy thing. You got to anything. Now, the Most High puts certain things on some brothers and sisters that he does not put on others. Okay? Give me that in 1 Corinthians. Is, uh, the Most High won't put more on you than you can bear that one. Where is it? 1 Corinthians 10 13. I'm going to show you that right here. Some brothers had to go into homeless shelters. Some sisters had to resort and go into a homeless shelter. That wasn't the case with everybody, though. Some brothers had to put away their wife. Some sisters had to get the hell away from their husbands. That is not the case with everybody. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Here it comes. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. You see that? He will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able. The Most High knows everybody's limit. He knows how strong you are in the spirit. So he's not going to put something on you that can destroy your mind. He won't do that. He's going to give you but so much. He said, I know this brother can deal with this. I know this sister can handle that. Okay, good. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Right. He's going to give you the brothers and sisters who know these scriptures to help you in your time of despair, when you're going through your trial. Okay? From there, watch this. Matthew 12, 31. Matthew 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto them, unto men. What does the Holy Ghost get a lie of the Holy Ghost? But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. What is that? The Lord's according to uh, Acts chapter 7 verse 51. Let's get that, y'all stop, you get that. Acts 7 51. Let's get the understanding of the... Because an, an idiot will read that and go, Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. What baba do not for what bamboo? That is not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Acts 7, 51. Acts chapter 6, I mean, Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised and heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. You. you do always resist the Holy Ghost. Is that step talking about resisting speaking in tongues? No, that's not what that's talking about. Keep reading. Which of the prophets have which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one? Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, right. who have received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. See, that's the point. Who have received the law and have not kept it. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. You do always resist the laws of God. As your fathers did, so do ye. That's what was being said. That's what Stephen was saying to them. So now, when we get back to Matthew 12 now, and 31, read that again. Matthew 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. So all manner of sin, breaking of the commandments, and the, whatever blasphemies we may have done shall be forgiven unto us. Go ahead. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. Who can explain it? Who can explain that to me now? Abiel. The blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, meaning if you, if you turn your back on the law, after you've known it, after you've been shown, not going to be forgiven. That's what he's talking about. This is talking about that brother or sister who repented of their sins, 
Learn the law, kept the law. Who did we read about today? Demas. We read about Demas. We read about Titus. We read about Alexander and Hymenius. Those are the examples that will not be forgiven. And remember, uh, Hymenius and Alexander, Paul said that he delivered them to Satan. That's right. He delivered them to Satan. So read on. Uh, and whosoever speaketh the word We're in verse 32, come on. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it mm. shall be forgiven him. You can speak against the Son of Man. Oh, I hate JC. JC, ah, ah, ah. Because you don't know. He's being done in ignorance. Come on. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, meaning you learn this law, then you go, you know what? The law is grievous to me. I don't want it no more. Go ahead. It shall not be forgiven him. It shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world. Neither in this world. Neither in the world to come. Or in the world to come. You know why that's important? There's a doctrine out there mm -hmm. that says you can sin all you want. You're going to die in this world. And then he's going to bring you back as the children. Yeah. That's not in the Holy Bible. I'm going to say it again. That is not in the Holy Bible. And that doctrine is meant to get you killed. It's meant to get you destroyed. Read that verse again so we can see what Christ said. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now, give me Romans 11. Here's where the dumb doctrine comes from. Romans 11, 26, please. This is how you got to cut all this stupidity amongst Israelites. You, it's okay if you're an adulterer, you're a homo, you'll die today, and then God's going to bring you back as the children. Right. So, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then why we got to repent then, huh? That's right. Why can't we all stay rapists and child molesters, drug users, pedophiles, or whatever the hell you was, and wait to die and then come be born again in the kingdom? Hey. Why I got to discipline myself? Why we got to discipline ourselves in God's laws then? You got it? Romans 11, yeah. 26. Romans chapter 11, verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. Y'all see that? That's where it's coming from. <laughs> they say, see, all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. Stop. Hold on. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What did we read in Zechariah 12? Mm -hmm. I mean, 13 and 8. Two thirds shall be cut off and what? Die. Die. So read this again. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. So now, what does that mean? Who can help me with that? Romans eleven twenty six. 26. Read the whole verse, y'all, mm -hmm. Exactly. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Let's just keep reading down. Mm -hmm. For this is my covenant unto them. When I shall take away their sins. Who is the them? Is it just Judah, Benjamin, Levi? Who is it? All Israel. All 12 tribes. Go ahead. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Who was the enemies? Wait, read the whole verse so we understand okay. get the thought. As concerning the gospel, they are they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Who were our enemies that God said is beloved? Abiel. The Israelites who were not keeping the commands, who were not keeping the law. Aparium. The scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. Right, the scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees. Those were Israelites of the southern kingdom. They were our enemies. What was Paul doing, for example? He was hired to kill the Israelites that followed Christ. And remember, this is Paul writing, so he understood it perfectly. Right. Those were the natural branches that you read up at the top of top part of this parable, of the top of this uh, situation here. Exactly. So read verse 26 again. And so all Israel shall be saved. Meaning all 12 tribes, the elect of the 12 tribes shall be saved. Not just the elect of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, but the elect of Ephraim, the elect of Simeon, the elect of Manasseh, the elect of Gad, and Reuben, and so forth and so on. They shall all Israel shall be saved. Go ahead. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, 
and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Now let's go back to Matthew 12. Matthew 12, verse 32. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good, and its fruit good. Or else make the tree corrupt, and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. What is the fruit we're supposed to have, Corey? It says either make the tree good, and its fruit good. Where would you go for the fruit? Where would you go to explain it? Robert, Mike, Mike Allah, Azariah, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians 5, is it verse 22? Let's go there. This explains the fruit. 522, thank you. This is the fruit every Israelite man and woman must have. If you find an Israelite who don't have this fruit, you're looking at someone who has the potential to become the two-thirds. Galatians 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The first fruit we all must have is love. And no, when the Bible uses the word love, it's not talking about the emotional love, Tony. Hug me, kiss me, caress me. What kind of love is it talking about, Tony? John 5 and 3. Oh, he came with it today. <laughs> Give me that. Read it for me, uh, Tony. You read it. Read it loud. Exalt your voice. I hope nobody whispered the answer to you. <laughs> and you brothers got to get yourself. Once y'all make that repentant change, your name should change too. Tony the Tiger. <laughs> Tony Montana. Tony Montana. <laughs> For well, this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. For well, this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. Thank you, Tony. Galatians 5 and 22 again. Galatians 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. So, that love is the first fruit you got to have. You got to be keeping God's laws. Go ahead. Joy. That's the next thing you got to have. Some of y'all come in here just sad and depressed, moping. Yeah, yeah, bro. Well, if y'all feel you got that spirit on you, like some of you brothers got that dead spirit on you, you better shake yourself. Because I know when y'all playing bowl, you ain't like that. Right, right. They're sad because they're looking at the prosperity of the wicked and wishing that they were with them. Yeah. You got to get rid of that mind state. Remember what that joy, us not having that joy, give me, you give me that. Do it on me 28, 46 or 47. I got, it, I got it, I got it. We didn't have that joy in God's laws. We were depressed. Remember 1 John 5 and 3, Tony just read it. It says his commandments are not what? Grievous. Grievous. Chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou serveth not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. What, 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 with what? With joyfulness. What's that word? Joyfulness. Again? Joyfulness. Again? Joyfulness. Joyfulness. And with gladness. And with gladness. You got to get that in if you ain't got it. Brothers or sisters, pray for it. Get into the scriptures. Get into your records and find something that gives you that joy. Right. Shake that dead, dull, depressed spirit. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how you're going to get the joy. You got to get into the Bible. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. For the abundance of all things. What that means simply? I'm all. Uh, for the entire world. For the earth. Right. The entire planet earth. Because remember, he said he made the, the world for what? For our sakes, this planet was made. So we didn't serve him with joyfulness. What? The Sabbath is here again? Right. Damn! <laughs> Give me that Amos 8 and 5 to show you. Some of y'all got this same spirit in the Amos 8 and 5. Some of y'all on the internet got this same spirit. You know who you are. Amos. Amos 8 verse 5. Amos 8 verse 5. 
saying, when will the new moon be gone? When will the new moon be gone? I can't stand that day. Okay? That we may sell corn. We want to sell corn because on the new moon there's laws that we got to abide in. We can't be buying and selling, and I hate that thing. Okay? And the Sabbath. And the Sabbath. That we may set forth wheat. That we may set forth wheat. We want to do our business. Making the ephah small and the shekel great. Making the ephah small and the shekel great. We're going to do injustice and with the money. And falsifying the balances by deceit. So, our forefathers had that same depressed, evil spirit. So when you come in this truth, you got to get into this book and rejoice over the high hope. I can't wait for the Sabbath to come. I'm like, thank the Lord. The Sabbath is here. Exactly. I'm rejoicing. That same joy you had in the world when you knew Christmas was coming, y'all know. Uh -huh. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> what Santa got me? What Santa got me? Or oh, that tooth came out. You looking under the right. pillow. Right. <laughs> looking the, for that money. Or the, or, the, or the Super Bowl. Right, or the Super Bowl. Or the NBA playoffs. That same joy we gotta have in this. That same joy. Go where we at? Galatians. We was in Galatians, right? Yeah. Galatians 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If you got all that, nobody can't, there's no law that can condemn you. You keeping the commandments. You got that, 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 that joy, that love, that peace in your life. Okay, that long suffering and whatever fruit of the spirit, because we know ourselves, we know what we all lack. We got to pray for it and work on it. Pray on it, work on it. Everybody understand that? Yes. Okay, let's go back now. Where we was at? We was in Matthew 12. Who's reading? 33. 33, you read that? You're in 34 now? Yeah. Okay. Matthew 12, verse 34. Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye be, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See that? Whatever's in your, your mind, your heart, brothers, because when it says, remember, your heart is just an a organ that pumps. So when he talks about your heart, he's talking about your mind. What scripture proves that? Phil. Mark 721. Very good. Mark 721. Let's get there real quick so we can understand. Now, when the Bible talks about your heart, it's really talking about your brain, your mind. And here's the proof, Mark 7, 21. Right. The book of St. Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Proceed evil thoughts. 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 This thing right here in your chest don't have no thoughts. The thoughts come from up here, in your mind. This is the heart the Bible's talking about, your mind. Let's go back to Matthew 12. Matthew 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what is Christ saying? You can only fake it, but for so long. He said, O generation of vipers, how can you, which are evil, speak good things? Why? Why did he say that? Because there was, you had the scribes and the Pharisees making believe they was coming with the laws of Moses. Christ came back and said, because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Because the Pharisees was making up traditions, saying, you young men don't have to honor your parents no more. If you tell them you are a gift. That was, remember that? And was it Matthew 15? 15, thank you. You gotta wash your hands up to the elbow. Um, they had a lot of traditions that they made up, which went against the commandments of God. So likewise today, let's bring it up to today. You got brothers that put on a good front that they Israel, but when they open their mouth, what are some of the things you're hearing? Nobody knows? Curses. You're hearing cursing? Cussing folks out? You're hearing hatred. What else do you hear? Evil communication. Evil communication, what else? I guess y'all staying off YouTube, is that right? Mm -hmm. You bunch of, yeah. <laughs> what else you hear? Um, like they'll explain. Like, Nobody's hearing that we can rape young oh. girls? That's 12, nobody heard that one? Mm -hmm. yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Nobody's hearing, hate the black woman, God's gonna kill all black women, nobody heard that? 
Oh, read that verse again. What was that? Read that again. Oh, generation of vipers, how can he being evil speak good things? But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Nobody's hearing, forget the black woman, marry the white woman. Nobody heard that? That's all out there amongst these certain Israelites. Read the verse again. Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? So it's impossible. If you're evil, you can't speak good things but for so long. Because, read on. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Because whatever's in your mind is going to eventually come out your mouth. If you, if you hate your people, give it time. Give it time. It's going to come out after a while. That's also what's written where it says about as a man thinketh, mm -hmm. so is he. Right. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's right. I'm glad y'all staying off that YouTube. Stay, stay off of it so y'all don't bring them, track them doctrines up in here. Thank God. And I hope y'all being honest. We don't. A good man out of the good treasure of the, of the heart bringeth forth good things. See that? A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. What are the good things he's going to bring forth, Gedaliah? The fruits from Galatians 5. Mm, yes, yes. Give me, a, uh, give me Romans 7. And is it Romans 7 and 7 or 7 and 12? 12. Thank you. What is the good things that's going to come out of us? Romans 7 and 12. Thank you. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. And what? And good. And what? And good. And what? And good. So the law, the commandment, is holy, just, and good. That's what Christ is. Go back now to Matthew 12, verse 35. 35. Matthew 12, verse 35. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. So the good things we're going to bring forth is God's laws. And coupled with God's laws is going to be joy. It's going to be peace and long-suffering, gentleness and meekness and temperance. All those fruits of the Spirit is going to come with that. Go ahead. And an evil man out of the evil treasure, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. And an evil man going to bring forth evil treasure. Go ahead. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Ooh, see that? Every idle word. You might, oh, I just said that. No, there's no such thing as, oh, I just said that. Why? Because whatever comes out of your mouth came from where? Your mind, your heart. That's why we got to discipline our mouths. That tongue, right. That tongue, like James chapter 3, is it? Yeah, Talks about the pocket. tongue being the smallest member, right. but it can kindle a fire, a world of, it's a world of iniquity. You say things you might necessarily have meant to say, or maybe you did mean to say it, and it caused all kind of problems. Okay, we don't? For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Right, for by thy words thou shalt be just, and this justification is before the Lord. You ain't, listen brothers, I want you to listen good to this. You ain't getting before the Lord and bedazzle him with Latin or Greek or Hebrew to justify raping your people. You're not going to do it. Read it again. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You ain't deceiving the Lord of heaven and earth. The Lord knows the heart, the mind. He know it. He know an evil is like when he see one, when he hear one. He knows us all. Go ahead. Um, then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees. I'm sorry. Jump down to 43. Jump. Say in the same chapter. Jump down to verse 43. Watch this. Verse 43. Mm -hmm. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. When does the unclean spirit leave from you, Robert? When you're not doing the Lord. No. The first time, Robert. I'm gonna give you another shot. The first time. When you what? You know the answer. Just think. So let me shake you. Your unclean spirit might be the spirit of pornography. Your unclean spirit might be smoking weed. When does it leave you initially? Oh, when you stop. Phil. When you repent. 
When you get on your, your face, Jerusalem, bow down to the Lord and say, Father, forgive me and take this sin from me. You have to confess it. You got to confess it. That spirit leaves you initially. Read it again. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. So this spirit, it might be an adulterous spirit. It might be a weed spirit. It might be a homo spirit. It might be a rape spirit, a murder spirit, a child molester spirit, a hatred spirit, a thief spirit. Read it again. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. It might be a whole spirit. Go ahead. It might be a lying spirit. I'm sorry. It things popping in my head. Go ahead. Seeking rest. Seeking rest. And findeth none. And the spirit don't find no rest. And he saith, I will return into my house. I'm going to return to my house. I'm going to return to get a liar. I'm going to return to Phil. I'm going to return to Ezekiel. I'm going to return to Aymar. I'm going to return whatever it is. Whoever it came from. He says, I'm going back home. Read that part again. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. He findeth your house, which is your mind, empty, uh, what? Swept, swept and, and garnished. What does garnish mean? Garnished. Abiel. Garnished. Uh, decorated. Decorated. Garnished means decorated. The spirit comes back in your house and go, whoa, look at that sofa. He lifts up the sofa cushion. Mm-hmm. And dusty. Oh, look at that lamp right there. My house is, this house is garnished here. What's on the TV? Click. Oh, weed is on the TV. Oh, I'm, I'm right at home now. Or the adultery spirit sitting on that couch. What's on the TV? Click. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Porno. Look at that. I'm right at home now. Class is good. I don't know why I left. Uh, <laughs> or that lion spirit. He bring his boys with him. Bring it, right? We didn't get there. He's going to say it. Come on. Then goeth he. Then goeth he. And taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Where did we just read that at? Well, we just read here. Christ said it someplace earlier. Yahshua. Uh, 12 and 31. 12 and 31. Read verse 31. He's saying the same thing. He just broke it down and gave a parable. Matthew 12 verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Right. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Why? Because you repented. The unclean spirit left you. It was gone. But you weren't studying. You didn't keep yourself strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You went back to your old man. Whether it was a lying spirit, an adulterous spirit, a homo spirit, uh, a hateful spirit. You went right back into that. You blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Okay, now you got caught up with it. Now it says that spirit takes seven more. Now you're worse than you was when you first came in. We're going to read that. From there. Go to uh, 2 Peter 2, back to 2 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to show you the same thing written. <clears throat> now, understand this. This does not mean that if you earn this truth, meaning you sin, you can't get up. That's not what Christ's talking about. He's talking about you caught up in the sin. You can't recover from the sin. Here's another example. 2 Peter 2. What verse do I want? You know what I want? 20. 20, thank you. That's it. This is the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stop. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world. What are the pollutions of the world, Zephaniah? Adultery. Adultery. That's a pollution. Um, breaking the Sabbath, partying. Partying, breaking the Sabbath. Hananiah, help me out with some. 
Porno, lying spirits, lying spirits, adultery, adultery, Islam, Christianity, yes, homosexuals, homosexuality, all of those are forms of pollutions. Read it again. Remember, y'all are learning to become teachers. You gotta explain what you're reading. Read it again. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, stop. Remember, we read that in Matthew 12 when the unclean spirit leaves. Remember, we read that. We through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Stop. How do we escape the pollutions, uh, Ima? Uh, by keeping the no. We use the words we read. Oh, Don't oh, make up words. Um, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. Through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is now you can come with it, uh, Ima. Which is the laws in Christ. Which is the laws in Christ. But I want you to learn to start using the words we're reading. Go ahead. And overcome. No, no, no. No, no, no. I skipped something. They are in, Let me read. Read the whole verse again. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. Entangled there meaning you what? You start dabbling in that sin again. I'm just going to take one, one um, drag. Just one drag. Just give me a little bit. Mm -hmm. I just want one piece of crack, a little piece. I don't. I ain't gonna get down like I used to. Y'all know how I used to get down. Just give me a little piece. Or the white woman. I'm just gonna hit it once, just once. Mm -hmm. Hit it again. <laughs> well, if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are in, again entangled therein. Again entangled therein. And overcome. And what? And overcome. And what? And overcome. And what? And overcome. What does that overcome mean, Joel? I mean, those seven spirits came into your mind. Right. Them seven spirits got you on lock now. You bound. You can't recover yourself no more. You don't even got the spirit to say, Lord, forgive me. That don't enter your mind no more. You gone. Yeah. When we read earlier, I mean, we, we didn't read it tonight, but there's a scripture that speaks about not running with the same excessive riot and uh, putting off the former conversation. You have to disassociate yourselves with people that will keep you in these things. So become entangled, becoming entangled again, meaning that now you pick up the phone and you entertain somebody who you used to run with in selling dope mm -hmm. or, you, or used to run with in, in committing wickedness. Once you repent it, you got to cut those people off. I know that's a hard thing for people to do. You got if you're gonna see them, you either correct them by the, you either you tell them say, listen, you're breaking the laws of the Most High. You got to correct them. That's what the scriptures say. Sure. Okay. You don't you don't justify them. You have to correct them. I forget how the scripture actually goes, but it speaks about if you're gonna deal with them, correct them. Right. Read verse twenty again. Right. Uh, for if after they have escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning see that in this spiritual war brothers you better understand the spirit you're dealing with this is not a physical kung fu fight thing in this fight you fall you get entangled in sin, you can become overcome with sin. It says your latter end is worse with you than your beginning. You might, your problem might have just been weed. Now it has grown. Remember, seven spirits come in you now. Now it's crack. <laughs> now it's heroin, cocaine. The, the, there's drugs that you would have never imagined using. Now you're dabbling with, you're messing with, you're trapped. You never would have thought you would have ended like that. Right. The scripture I was thinking about, it says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Right. That's, that was what, four, right. That's what I was thinking of. So if you ain't going to reprove them, stay away from them because you will become entangled again. Right. Verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Mm, it would have been better if you never learned this truth. Then to learn it, and notice it says, turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Where did we read that earlier? 
Only Joel got a clue. Oh, Tony. Roman Seven as well? Nope, Joel. Matthew 12, 31. What he said? Um, talk about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Remember, what, remember the Holy Ghost is the law, the commandments. This says, the Holy Commandment. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the Holy Commandment delivered unto them. That's the same thing Christ said about blaspheming the Holy Ghost.